um, there's nothing like being asked to give a presentation to really focus your mind on what your group is, and we're a pretty new group. We're, we're a very new group with a very long history, if that makes sense. I'll try and explain that in a minute. So I'm sitting down trying to think, what are we? So just to break that down, we're completely voluntary, community-based, multidisciplinary, as in we have a number of different levels working within the group. Um, there is a really, really long history of pre-hospital care in East Cork. I would go so far as to say that East Cork is the birthplace of cardiac first response. There's a person who most people in this room won't have ever heard of, and he's a guy by the name of Dr. Jim Dorn, and I'm calling him a pioneer, and I think anyone that, that knows him would, would agree with me. This guy was, was way ahead of his time. He was a Cork man who went to England, trained as a doctor, came back in the early 70s, and set up a GP practice in East Cork. He bought a defibrillator himself privately, at a cost, I'm reliably informed, of £3,000 in 1981, and had that in his GP surgery in, in County Cork, in Carrigtool. It was a cardiac recorder, CR2006, um, 12 VDCG, uh, defibrillator, obviously, uh, synchronised cardiac version, all that kind of stuff that's, that's top of the range technology now. This was on his vehicle in 1981, back in East Cork, so if anyone wants to and attacking me afterwards to say that, we, that he wasn't a pioneer, that he wasn't the forerunner of it, we'll, we'll meet outside later. <laughs> um, you know, coming on from this then, this, this guy done all this off his own back. He, he was seeing that there was, there was no success rates back in the early 80s with pre-hospital cardiac arrest. He had this 10 years before the, um, the health board in the, in the area put defibs onto the ambulances. So um, Dr. Doran unfortunately passed away as a result of an, a witness out of hospital cardiac arrest in the mid 90s. Uh, his son, Dr. Hugh Doran, which is a name might be more familiar to some people, continued on his good work and um, it has been responding to out of hospital cardiac arrests, traumas, obstetric emergencies, behavioural disorders, anything that you can think of um, in East Cork since then. On a, bit of, on a bit of an ad hoc basis, back in 2007, West Cork Rapid Response was formed. They're not up on the, on the page because I'm not here to talk about West Cork Rapid Response, but they were looking at what was being done in East Cork. They had a doctor down there who was very interested, wanted to do this, seen the work was being done by Dr. Doran, and they got a committee together, got funding, and set up West Cork Rapid Response, which is basically one doctor in a vehicle responding to all types of medical emergencies at the behest of the National Ambulance Service. So he was a declared asset to the ambulance service. He put himself on the system of control. If they had a big trauma or cardiac arrest, he would go out to it. In 2013, it took us a long, long time, but a, a group of like-minded individuals in East Cork came together and we formed East Cork Rapid Response using West Cork Rapid Response as their template. Our, our logo is identical, apart from obviously East and West is different. Um, our committee was a group of 10 people. We have two members of Angara Shiakana, um, a guard and a civilian staff, and two from the National Ambulance Service and six, I might not up right, yeah, I think six uh, business people who were interested in making sure that the service continued. So our primary aim of the committee was to make sure that this went on and that we didn't, we didn't lose the service. It, it's getting very expensive, you know, there's a vehicle, there's equipment, there's consumables for the doctor. So that, that was the, the reasoning behind the committee. I just wanted to um, show th these two photographs. This is Jim Doran's Jeep from 1982. That's the CR2006 there, and that's it sitting behind the, the driver's seat. So that's 2000, no, sorry, that's 1982 outside his, outside his house. For anyone that doesn't know, that's Cork, which is <laughs> the, the, the real capital and the centre of the universe for a lot of people. I, I'm not from Cork, I'm from up here where all the good hurdles come from, but I'm, I've been down in Cork for the last 13 years now. This is East Cork, so we have Cork City and basically our border for our main area of operations. We have the M8 motorway runs up here as one border, and that's the N25 running through it. We have three large towns, we have Cove, Middleton and Yall. We have a population of about 15,000 here, 12,000 and about 8,000. We have an oil refinery, two power stations, and a distillery, and a huge um, suburban kind of commuter belt area here. So a lot of, lot of, lot of housing, um, and we have a lot of factories and stuff in and out. So all of the work being been done by East Cork Rapid Response, it's not specifically, uh, and most people here are interested in, in pre-hospital cardiac arrest, it's not all pre-hospital cardiac arrest, a lot of the stuff is trauma. This is Dr. Dorn, which was photographed about two weeks ago at a road traffic collision on the M8 motorway. Um, this is our response vehicle, Volvo XC70, all our gear in the back including audibles, ventilator and all the other uh, bits and pieces in Zali series, uh, defibrillator. Obviously all of this costs money and 
it was a lot of fundraising goes on to, to keep it going. 2003 was our first formal year as East Cork Rapid Response, although the doctor had been working obviously for you know, almost 20 years before that. So just some of the, the figures just to bore you here for 197 callouts, including 17 cardiac arrests. That works out about 8.6% of his callouts for cardiac arrests in uh, 2003, with three ROSCs. Uh, at least one of them definitely went home with uh, no neurological deficit. And one mass casualty incident, which was this here, which was a, a school down in Yall. This is actually West Cork Rapid Response's vehicle. They attended this incident as well, along with the National Ambulance Service, Fire Service, and Gardaí. Um, student had off a smoke bomb in a confined area in the school at lunchtime, and approximately 100 teenagers, many of which with asthma and just got very excited. They all had the effects of smoke inhalation, so we had a lot of breathing problems. And we were potentially looking at getting at least half of those were going to have to go to hospital. So with the two doctors on scene, they managed to set up a triage centre, and after an hour and a half treating at scene, nobody ended up going to hospital. So there was constant communication back with the Cork University and Mercy University hospitals to see where they're going to have to clear spaces. But thankfully, due to both doctors being at scene, that didn't happen. 2014, so far, 26 incidents, six cardiac arrests, which is nearly 23% of our call out so far this year. We're not really sure exactly why that is. It just happened that he's got a lot of cardiac arrests. I was trying to think of something to say about the human element because you know, you're all here, you're all working in your community and you all know personal stories where, where people have um, been affected. So I was trying to think of something funny or smart to say and I couldn't, so I found this photograph here. This is our doctor in our response car and I just want to talk briefly about these two guys. This is a survivor of major trauma, a guy called Martin Enright. Um, about seven or eight years ago, Martin was working for a summer in a, a mill and he was cleaning out um, old grain inside the silo and he got caught in, a, in an auger, got dragged into the auger, spent two and a half hours trapped in it from his, you couldn't see anything from his buttocks down, fractured both femurs, both tib and fibs. Um, Dr. Doran attended the scene, he got advanced analgesia, sedation, um, bloods were taken off, sent by the Gardaí up to the Cork University Hospital to be tight and cross matched in case we needed to bring down blood to transfuse him. Um, decision then with the a &E consultant on duty by phone as to whether we get a, a whether an orthopedic team would come down and amputate both his legs to get him out. Uh, Dr. Dorm made the decision not to do that, and Martin came out of the mill after two and a half hours, been trapped, went to ICU where he spent a month. Eventually, he lost one leg due to infection. And you might notice this around his, his neck, he won a Mr. Universe contest for uh, bodybuilding there recently in, in the US. This, this gentleman here is, if you want to save your applause for one second, this guy is, um, is Mr. Richard O'Reardon. Also about seven or eight years ago, um, Richard was heading to play a game of golf, suffered a car, um, out of hospital cardiac arrest when driving his car, crashed into a pole, bystanders rang to the fire service and the ambulance service, a retained fireman en route to the scene about three minutes after the time of call, came or sorry, en route to the fire station, came across the scene, recognised it was a cardiac arrest, took him out, no defib, started chest compressions, um, time is up, okay. Um, Dr. Doran arrived with two shocks, got a ROSC. Richard became one of our founding members of the, um, the organization since then. This is really why I'm here. Was East Cork doing all it could to treat out a hospital cardiac arrest? It wasn't, because we only have one doctor in one location. So we asked ourselves who could help, where were they, and how. So we, just, uh, we have a load of APs and paramedics who were living and work, working in the area. We began to, we purchased um, Zal 80 Pros, and we've given them out now to four. APs based in four different areas who were all part of the National Ambulance Service off duty responder scheme and, and are uh, notified by text alert. So we're hoping that these, along with the existing National Ambulance Service assets in the area and Dr. Doran will make a contribution. We've also started training members of the community. We've run two courses so far. We aim to have a course a month uh, for the rest of the year. While at this course, one of our AP instruct uh, BLS instructors who's an AP got a text alert for cardiac arrest, which was five minutes away from where he was doing the course. He abandoned the course, he had to leave, went with his brand new AD, which he'd been given, knew the address he was going to, because he knew someone who lived there, arrived at the location to realise that it was a guy from the previous slide, Richard O'Reardon, our cardiac arrest survivor and founding member and committee member, and unfortunately Richard had suffered an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, which was unwitnessed, and despite our AP being the first person on scene in four minutes at the time of call, Richard had obviously passed away at that stage, so out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is something that we hold very dear because of Richard and obviously because we can realise that there's, there's a big big thing we can work on. So the future, second doctor, maybe, new equipment, definitely replacing what we have, maybe getting pre-hospital ultrasound or lactate level testing, uh, more ADs for APs and Ps definitely, community CPR training and data collection, we're, we're falling in a little bit on that, we need to collect our data a bit better.
So I'm glad they admitted to one really, really fast. <laughs>